Hi everybody, in today's video I'd like to do a review and a basic walkthrough of probably my favourite plugin for Lightroom, which is uh, the uh, Tiffin DFX version 4 photo plugin, which um, Tiffin will very kind enough to send me. And they, I've um, reviewed and used Tiffin DFX version 3 a couple of years ago and it really uh, really is a fantastic piece of software that I'd uh, recommend. Um, I just want to sort of do a quick review, show you how it works, do a walkthrough and uh, kind of turn you on to this uh, great tool for making post-processing of uh, your photos a lot simpler. Because one of the things I find really challenging say with this image here is you know I, I enjoy going out and taking photographs and wandering around on a nice summer's day and taking pictures of things that catch my eye but when it comes to actually doing the post-processing bit beyond adding a little bit of contrast saturation clarity and stuff like that I'm often not sh quite sure how f how far I should go or even what the options are because I'm kind of I'm kind of the sort of go in the past, um, you know, dabbling with HDR and things, I've uh, I've <laughs> I've managed often to take things too far and make photos look unrealistic and um, not that very good. When all you really want to do is kind of make the, the photos pop a little bit, and this is where Tiffin's uh, DFX really helps. Because say you, I mean, I'm in Lightroom here. So even within the basic um, tool panel on the on the right hand side, you've got so many things you can kind of play around with. And where Tiffin are coming from is that they're probably were most known for, I mean, they still do this, actually physical filters that you screw onto your camera. Um, but obviously now in the digital age, plenty of these filters can actually be simulated very, very well in post-processing. And in fact, there's lots of digital filters that you couldn't do with an optical filter. So that's why they've created uh, this plugin for Lightroom. And there's a standalone version as well that I'll be reviewing over the next um, over the next few weeks. But it's more than just a plugin. So tell you what, let's dive in. Now, this is a photo of a church I took a couple of weeks ago. And the thing I'd probably recommend you do is before you dive into the dive into DFX4, do the basic things. So maybe do the crop that you were going to do. Um, if there's any straightening that needs to be done, you know, straighten it out. Um, in this particular photo here, you can see there's quite a lot of distortion in terms of the building appears to be leaning away from us. So what I'll do is I'll just go down to lens correction and I'll just stick it on auto. And Lightroom's pretty damn good at sorting this out. So that kind of straightens lots of the things out. And then all, I'm, all I'm going to do is just going to right click and go to Edit in DFX4. And this will flash up um, DFX. Add it, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, just please. And this basically saves your photo as a lossless TIFF and then shunts it over into DFX. And here we are. So we're in the the plugin but as I say it's much more powerful than, than just a plugin so we've got our picture in the middle and then we've got some uh, controls on the top for comparing the images we can zoom in and out we can scroll around we can do an a b sort of comparison um, like that probably we can do it half and half we'll probably I'll show you in a little bit actually when we've actually made some changes um, on the left hand side, this is where it gets very, very powerful. We've got our image, which is this one here in the middle. And then we've got our one that we're going to apply our filter with. And this is a layer stack, just like in Photoshop. And that's where the program become very powerful, as you'll see shortly. And then down the bottom, we've kind of got a whole list of kind of filters that we can apply to our photo. So let's start off with the color tab. And what you can see straight away, we've got some really simple ones. So if we click on auto adjust here, and then uh, what you can see now on the right hand side are some presets so we can apply an auto color adjustment, auto contrast, auto level. You'd be very familiar, these are in Lightroom, they're in Picasso, they're in Photoshop. Very, very simple thing to do. So you, you know, you could adjust the photo like that in this particular section. As we come across, We've got the black and white uh, effect that we can apply. And as you can see in the presets here, we could apply a black and white that was uh, simulating it taken with a yellow filter on the front of the camera, um, red, nice dark skies, uh, orange. 
uh, normal. Now, also, if you look down here, we've got the presets, which we're looking at. But we've also got the parameters. And if we click on here, we can actually change um, each, uh, the, the fine tune it. So we can say, well, I'll tell you what, let's have a red filter. Um, but let's increase the contrast of that filter, like so. You could do something like this. So you can fine tune the effect exactly as you want it. And then we can reset that back to normal and go back to the presets. We've got color correction, so we can, you know, uh, change the white balance. We can apply curves. So, you know, we could do something like, um, you know, apply a, a curves adjustment as we would in uh, Photoshop or in Lightroom. And we can kind of kind of do it here as well. Now, all these things where I'm clicking on these effects and playing around with them, they're just being applied over here on the left hand side, but nothing has actually been applied yet. Um, and then we've got, uh, we could change our levels. Levels, I particularly like playing around with levels. I think it's a great way to adjust your photo to give it a more contrast. And then we've got lots of similar f-stop for exposure, low contrast, loads and loads of different effects that we can uh, apply should we wish. Um, now, and let me show you, I'm just going to quickly dive in and just show you something really cool as well. So let's say um, we did want to change the levels. Yeah, let's, let's play around with the levels of this photo. Let's bring up the darks. Like that let's make the brights so we're going a little bit too far probably so it's going to look a little bit too contrasty but this is where the real power comes in we could do that and we can think well we like that but it's a little bit too much and because in our layer stack over here you see that we can adjust the opacity of that particular level so we can turn the effect down not simply by changing the settings here but by adjusting the opacity, which is really cool. And we can turn the effect on and off. And then we could look at, you know, the original and then the affected one side by side. There we go. So you can see that like that. We can sort of, you can see the change happening there, which is uh, really cool. Now, it could be actually, yeah, we really like that. So what we want to know is it could be we wanted to uh, uh, put our black and white layer on. So what we do now is we click up here. We add a layer, and now we're going to add our black and white effect. How good is that? So now we've got our black and white effect, and we can say, actually, we like the, we like the normal. Do we like the normal one? Or do we like, don't like blue? Yellow's okay. Orange, green. Actually, yellow, I think, is quite good. Yeah, I like that. I'll tell you what, let's go back and have a look at... Um, let's just edit our levels one. See how we're going in between... And although we've got the black and white filter on the top, and so what we can do is I said, let's um, let's make uh, that let's let's get rid of let's make this a really strong filter and see how it darkens it there. And so we can stack up a load of digital filters, a bit like if we were stacking lots of filters on the front of our camera to take a photo, with the advantage that you know there isn't really any loss of quality as you can get with optical filters, and it's all extremely fine tunable. Very, very simple indeed. Very, very powerful. So you can see there we've done a we've done a simple black and white conversion. But I tell you what, let's um let's get rid of uh, these layers here. And let's just get back to so we've got our original and we've got the, the fill the layer we're gonna be working on. Now this is where the magic really starts to come in my eyes, and that's the film lab. So if we click on the film lab. You'll see across the bottom again, we've got lots of effects we could apply. We could do a bleach, beach, <laughs> a bleach bypass effect. And then over to the right-hand side, we can play with the effects. And as we've got lots of presets, oh, that's, that's quite a nice one. I like that. And again, we could dive into the parameters if we want and really fine-tune it. But that's quite nice. We've got cross-processing. So print to slide, print to slide, lots of different powers. You tend to find the first one will be the least powerful and sixth will be the, be the strongest. Slide to print if you're going to cross-process it that way. Absolutely amazing. And I'm just going to skip the film stops for now. I'm just going to go over to here where we could add grain. So we can add grain to our photos as well if we want to simulate how that would look grunge we can add dirt to our photos we can add hair we can add scratches all sorts of things to make them funky and uh, instagrammatic if you like um, and there's loads of things to play for but let's go back to film stocks and this is probably 
one of my favourite, well, probably the favourite thing that I enjoy about um, the FX4 because within here we have got literally hundreds of simulations of genuine um, films. Um, so that, let's have a so we've got Agfa at the top, and then we can go through to people like Kodak, Ilford, uh, loads and loads of different ones. So let's go to let's let's uh, short now. Let's go to black and white films. Let's go to there and. Um, what should we? I quite like Neopan A cross. Let's click on that. So there we have an accurate simulation of Fuji Neopan A cross applied to our image. And again, we could go into the parameters and we could fine tune it should we wish. And so, say we apply the uh, Fuji Pan Neopan A cross and we go, yeah, that's nice. But I tell you what, I would like a little bit more contrast. But I'm going to go back to the color and I'm going to go to my levels. But what I'm going to do is we're going to add another layer. There it is. And then we're going to apply. Uh, where's levels gone? Levels, there it is. Let's supply a little bit more contrast. And again, so we can play around with that. And then I can say, well, I'll tell you what, I like that, but I'm just going to turn the opacity down a little bit. And you see how much power we've got. And then we could go back to the film lab. We could add another level. And you could say, well, actually, I want to add a bit of grain. So add some basic monochrome grain to that. So we're kind of simulating the look of an old, oldish photograph. Very, very powerful. Let's get rid of these. Let's go back to here. So again, we've got our, um, our original and the layer we're going to do it on. Let's go back to the film lab. And what we're going to do here is go to the film stocks. And let's have a look for... I quite like um, Kodak, Kodachrome, Kodak, let's just put Kodak in. Kodachrome 64 is a well-known one, isn't it? That's very, very good. Let's just hunt through. Kodachrome, where are we? I've gone past it. I have. Let's go back up to the top. There we are. Kodachrome 2, Kodachrome 2L. Let's just reset that here, like so. And we're going to go to, oh, I don't want black and white films, do we? We want all films, color films, slide. Code of, code of Chrome 64. So that makes it nice and bright and lovely. And you could just simply stop here. And you could uh, use this as your image. And then what we would then do is we could then press the um, save button, the done button, and that would then take us back into Photoshop. Uh, into Lightroom, sorry. So as you can see, with DFX, not only do we have this amazing resource of hundreds and hundreds of different um, slides, uh, different film simulations, where we can we can choose our favourites, but we can make it as simple or as complicated as we want. We could just simply add one filter and then nip back into um, a Lightroom, or we can make it more uh, complicated to finely tune it to our tastes. Let's go down to the bottom and let's have a look at some of these other um, uh, tabs as well. So we've got HFX Fusion. This is where we're going to apply um, lots of different um, special effects. But what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say done to this. We're going to take this back into Lightroom. And we'll choose a different image just to show you some of the different effects on as well. It's just saving it now. Saving it as a... Um, as a TIFF, and that should fire it back into Lightroom. Fingers crossed, here it comes. Let's give it a sec. <laughs> it, my laptop will always kind of struggle when I'm trying to record a screencast and do some quite heavy duty lifting as well. And here it comes, so there it is, uh, changed for uh, DFX. So let's go to the next photo. Here we are. There it is. So this nice clock tower. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go into the uh, lens correction. We're just going to do a little bit of auto just to straight out. That looks okay. And then we're going to right click edit in DFX4. Edit with a copy and this will fire this one up. And I'll show you some of the other filters as well. Shouldn't take too long just to, just to fire it up. And we can check it. 
Okay, so we're back in DFX. We've got our photo in the middle. Again, we've got our layers here. So let's have a look at HDF Fusion. You can see here we've got things like center spot where we can um, basically uh, have the middle of the photo nice and clear and a out of focus bit around the, around, the, um, around the edges. We've got various diffusion effects. Now, what I do recommend with some of these effects is have a look at the instructions, the PDF that comes with the software and you can read what they do because a lot of these are quite subtle effects. Um, but they can make a big difference, especially in things like portraits, maybe not so good on some of these uh, landscape pictures. We've got grads and tints. Now, these are, these are great examples here. Where we've got all these different colored grads that we can play around with. We've got Roscoe gels, and uh, we've got neutral density filters. But remember, although some of these might look pretty strong, what you do is you play around with the opacity of the layer to back them off. And that's where things get very interesting indeed, because you know you can take quite a strong effect and tone it down polarizer this is an amazing effect actually i'm very very surprised at how well this works really good at darkening a nice blue sky and leaving the foreground you know as you'd expect it to be as if you're using a glass polarizer which is something very difficult to simulate and then we've got various lens effects um, we can do little light effects as well where we can change sorts of things and then we've got loads of special effects how about a nice infrared picture how about x-ray how about some color infrared they all look very good they'll look very very realistic so there we go tiff ndfx 4 version 4 the lightroom photo plugin highly recommended download the free trial give it a go and i guarantee it will make your post processing much easier much more enjoyable and your photos will look better. My name is Rob from robnofo.com and hopefully I'll see you again soon.